giving thanks to God the Father, who hath made us worthy to be partakers of the lot of the saints in light. This is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. The end. What is our end? In thinking of one, one's end, one hopes that they will be ready. Ready to end well. It's very important that we, we proceed as if we are always to come to our end. We're not promised the next minute. In corporal sickness, you hope the doctor will give timely remedies, but he is not always able to do so. People die in an instant, in a car crash. They don't have time. You don't always have time to make a good preparation. There is always a spiritual remedy. There's always time for us to, to come now to the ministers of Christ to seek that remedy. But an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And it's thus that our Lord speaks today warning us, reminding us to be prepared for the end. Beware. This world will not last, and persecution must come. The final purge of the world, separation from the she of the sheep and the goats, Be not frightened, but be, be aware. You must work. We have the opportunities to prepare ourselves well. Now is the time to do so. It's very important we use it wisely. As we, we just read the other day in the gospel about the ten virgins, five wise and five foolish, and the foolish not having oil in their lamps, not being prepared, They didn't understand the seriousness. For sure, he's going to let us in. For sure, our Lord's going to let us in. For sure, I will have time. Instead, he said, I know you not. Your lamp isn't even lit. What is our lamp but our, our Catholic faith? It's lit by our living our Catholic faith. It's appropriate as things come to a close, we, we look after them, ending them well, to ending them well. When we leave this life, how will we prepare? We all know that then, for sure, we'll get our things in order. For sure, We'll look to them. This is what the foolish virgins thought. We have time. We can sleep on, and when the bridegroom arrives, we'll fetch our oil and light our lamps. Then we'll live the faith. Then we'll be repentant. We'll change our lives. They didn't have the time they thought they would. How many people find themselves in like circumstances? Every year we have the same end to the liturgical year, this same Mass, as today some of you maybe had to flip through your missiles to find it because the, the year isn't, isn't as, uh, it doesn't always conform to the same, to the liturgical year. And so to have this Mass at the end of the liturgical year it's based upon on Easter. And so every year we have this. We come to this part of the year, and we can look back and say, how have we done? How do we differ from last year? Can we even remember? Do we even know what our soul looked like last year? 
Were we in the state of grace most of the time? Were we performing virtues? Were we growing? Did we make any resolutions, any, any future progression? At least this time of year, we need to plan some time for reflection. It's coming to that point where even the secular world has New Year resolutions. But what are our spiritual resolutions? We need to reflect on the state of our souls. And then, realizing the state of our souls, we need to provide for our, our household that we may walk worthy of God in all things pleasing. Realize, to gain heaven, we must be worthy. Worthy of seeing the Almighty. And in the Gospels, the walk is so much used to mean our effort. We need God's grace, yes, but we also need to do the work. Because when a baby is first born, it can't walk by itself. It even needs help to stand. Yes, as it grows, it learns and builds muscles through its practice use, and it begins to walk. even at first with the help of its parents, yet then eventually it does stand by itself. Because it has a goal in mind. Finally, mostly after fear has left it, is when we learn to ride a bike. Then we can stand alone. And even though this is an imperfect analogy, for God's grace is always with us, always sustaining us. Yet the point is made. We cease not to pray for you and to beg that you may be filled with the knowledge of the will of God and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk. Dearly beloved, we have to have a goal in mind to walk towards, that our efforts are, are sustaining us, that our, our efforts are pushing us onto. We need to grow. We need to grow in the spiritual life. We need to make progress. We can't just go on year after year doing the same thing. We need to advance. You're always moving in the spiritual life, either forwards or backwards. And so we take this time, the end of the liturgical year, to assess our growth. Growth towards our end, union with Christ. And so, how do we suffer? How do we see the crosses that come to us every day? Can we see them? Are we ready to unite with Christ? And now soon we will enter the Advent season to prepare for his coming, to begin the cycle again. We go through this year after year, and we need to make spiritual advancements. We need to be able to see our daily sufferings as gifts How do we respond to them? Do we even realize the crosses that are presented to us? Be aware, be spiritually aware, and what changes can we make? How can we imply them? And more importantly, how can we persevere in them? So we read today in the Gospel, of the end of the end of the world. And we're living in now what most of us agree to be the great apostasy. And so now it's for us to prepare ourselves. 
Some of us, most of us, will not live to see the great chastisement. But we are living now a very dire time for the church, a very unique suffering for the church. But Christ has willed us to be here to save our souls. So we need to use this time that we have well. We need to remember that we're not alone in this, though. We're not alone in our toil, that someone is always holding the bicycle seat, as it were. God's grace is always there. He's always ready to assist us if we but call upon him. Also, he gives us the strength to support one another by a good example. Keeping our lamps lit for everyone to see. Not just when we think the Lord is present, not just on Sunday, but we need to come together as a parish to support one another in our recreations when we go out into the world. That all can see that we can prepare a full harvest for our Lord when he comes again. The more souls we can gather for the Lord and ours especially, we'll have him, have him receive us as good servants to enter into his kingdom, who hath made us worthy to be partakers of the lot of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the remission of sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.